What's up guys, Kevin here, back with another video. Today I will be doing my monthly coffee break. Uh, I have a few things that I put together for you guys. Um, so if you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I do this once a month just to, uh, one, I guess give an excuse to have coffee in the afternoon, and two, to put together a bunch of things that I thought were really cool this past month, not necessarily things that uh, have been released, although sometimes it is. Um, it could be leaks, uh, previous like way back releases that I recently like refound, or just cool things in general. I think in the fashion community, it gets kind of hard to uh, kind of keep up with things and kind of convince yourself that you need to buy something in order to make a review or in order to make a video. So instead of getting trapped in that cycle of just constantly buying, 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 I thought this was a good alternative way of almost showcasing some cool uh, pieces and cool ideas without necessarily needing to put monetary value into it and continue that cycle of consumption. That being said, I do have a pickups video on the way. What type of segue where it's like, I don't want to consume anymore. I have, I have consumed. 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 But anyways, uh, this is this month's uh, coffee break. So today I'm going to be making a concentrated pour over. So normally pour, pour, pour overs are a 1 to 15 to 1 to 18 dilution. Uh, like for every one gram of bean, it's going to be like 18 grams of water. Uh, but today I kind of want to do a more concentrated. So I'm going to do like a 1 to 14, maybe 1 to 14 or 13 even. Um, today I'm going to be making coffee that was roasted by Momo's Coffee. This is their Columbia roasted in Busan. And this one is passion fruit, tropical fruits, kiwi, chocolate, and hibiscus tea. Uh, they are a roastery, obviously in South Korea, Momo's Coffee. Uh, I get all of my beans, not from them, but from a coffee, I guess, sourcing company called Kumquat Coffee. Uh, they do really, really cool beans. They roast their own beans as well in collaboration with a local roaster. Uh, they have some really, really good drinks. Unfortunately, they are in SoCal and I'm in NorCal right now, so I can't visit them locally, but I do buy all of my beans pretty much from there. They also have a coffee subscription where if you want to buy, um, if you want one bag or two bags a month that were sourced by them, uh, they'll like send it to you, I think the first week of every month. Um, it's a pretty competitive deal. And then they also provide you, I think it was like 10 to 15, 10 to 20% off, I think. Uh, for that month for that roastery that um, was previously featured. Um, previous month was Momo's Coffee. Uh, this month was um, a coffee company in Berlin called The Farm. And the month prior to that, I forgot, but I know the one before that one is like one of my favorite roasteries in Korea as well. It's called Fritz Coffee. Um, so I'm definitely planning on going to visit Momo's and Fritz when I'm in Korea. Uh, this fall but again this video is not sponsored if you guys want to check it out get some cool beans i guess um like check them out in the description down below anyways momo's coffee i have a little bit of leftover beans like i don't know like a part of me deep inside is like oh like maybe i should like do something with this but i just have a little bit of leftover beans from when i did my mocha pot and i just couldn't fit any more um so i'm just gonna add this treat it as zero And I actually don't have much left, so we'll see how many. Oh, I'm so professional. Bean gods, forgive me for I have sinned. Because so I think the beans that were in here that I grinded up were from the farm. Uh, it's their peach and wild honey. I have to double check on what the name was. So it looks like this has 37 grams, so double check. 37 times 14, that'll be 518 mils of water. So I have my Chemex here that I just use a V60 filter, put a chopstick in it to prevent um, 
it from being suctioned up. All right. So while I do the bloom, let's talk about, actually, this is something that I've been sort of thinking about doing. I'll separate it out to like releases and then rumor slash upcoming releases and then stuff from like an archive and that have previously released, but I guess isn't currently part of like that new, new cycle, I guess. So first up is the Terror Squad Air Force One. Let that breathe a little. Terror Squad Air Force One. I remember back when I first uh, got into shoes, both the Rockefellers, the the Uenos, the Terror Squad Air Force Ones, the story behind all those were crazy. And it was always this object in my head where I'm like, they'll never, like, like it'll never come out. And I know that Terror Squad, um, they originally had their um, Air Force Ones made illegally without Nike's permission and then they got caught and then that's why they stopped. And then there was also friends and family released sometimes, sometime later, if I remember correctly. Um, and then that one had a very, very like limited release. I believe it was around the same time that um, Jay-Z released shoes with Reebok, the S Carter, if I remember correctly. Um, that stuff came out really, really cool. Uh, but having Terror Squad Air Force Ones released in such a massive scale, I think just shows the testament to where the sneaker culture and that sort of street culture is gone where personally i think nike is reaching back into the archive which isn't a bad thing their like historical archive and trying to appease people that were quote unquote like ogs to like reinvigorate that level of cool um but i don't know to what success uh i really do like the shoes they just simple, clean, like everyday shoes. And I think a lot of people will get wear out of them, especially um, both the black and white as well as the porpoise colorway, which I think that one is called Loyalty, if I remember correctly. I think those ones only released um, in New York or the state of New York, maybe New Jersey, but um, re released there. Uh, that the shoe is cool. From what I heard that the quality is like pretty good from what I heard. Um, I also heard that the, the, the quantity itself was pretty ample. Um, a lot of people were able to get their pairs, get their sizes. Some people who really wanted them were able to double, triple up. So that's always good. Um, I think we're in a spot where a lot of that big hype appeal has kind of died down. Um, I personally think it has to do with the, the economy the macroeconomics of the thing where Nike previously, they could afford to not release pairs at a wide scale to drive up that level of energy and that level of hype. But now that the, the well has dried up, um, they have to do things where um, the people who are previously interested in limited product weren't able to get it and settled for that secondary, that almost like knockoff product. Like we saw that with like the Union Jordan ones, they released two mids that looked really, really close to the Jordan ones. And you know, like people ate that up. Like even that shoe was reselling for a little bit for a moment. Um, and I think that just shows that Nike is, Nike is a commodity company. I know as much as people um, in the community like to phrase it in a way where it's like a necessity or it's like for innovation and stuff like that, they haven't really innovated that much. The last thing that I can think of that they've really innovated is, I mean, ZoomX is a much better foam for running. That carbon fiber plate is great. And you know, it got to the point to where the propulsion and that kinetic motion that the combination of Zoom X stack plus that carbon footprint or that carbon foot plate got a version, a beta version of the Alpha Fly 2's band. I think that was pretty cool, but really the technology itself, maybe Flyknit was the last one. Maybe um, they had another knit that was like Flyknit, 
but also more sustainable and stronger. But they only released it in a very finite amount of numbers. I'll try and put it on the screen while I was talking about, but it was like a purple knit. Um, yeah, Nike really hasn't innovated that much and they aren't an innovation company, they're a commodity company. So that's where they're trying to cash in on all of that and trying to get as much money as they can. While previously they can leave money on the table because that drives up demand and energy for future releases, as well as drives up demand for their secondary product that was um, not in collaboration with something else. So they don't have to split any money or anything like that and go direct to consumer. Um, so that's where I think the, the idea and the reasoning and the business rationale for the Terror, for, Terror Squad Air Force Ones came from. But I still like the shoes. I still think they're cool. Um, I'm curious to see whether or not uh, they'll release more colorways of it. I know there are a few different samples that are floating around. There's like a pink friends and family one, but we'll see, I guess, how this develops. Oh, the Supreme Ramalzi Dunk High. Um, I personally like the Dunk High more than the Dunk Low. Also, this guy is done. That looks beautiful. Oh my God. Look at that. Very, very nice. Yeah, so as I was saying, the Ramalzi Dunk High, I really like them more than the Lows. So I actually picked up the Ramalzi Dunk Highs. I really like this pair. Um, I opted not to do a review of it on my channel just because I'm sure plenty of other people are probably going to do reviews and going to do all that stuff. But I really think that the Dunk High model beats the Dunk Low clear out the water, at least for this collaboration. I think the, um, the amount of artwork that's on here and it just looks so sick. And the quality of the suede, it's good. It's um, it's what you would expect, a touch above just plain GR quality. But I think just the look of it is super, super killer. I, I love this pair. Um, I think it would have been awesome to see this in like a dunk low as well, just to have like that matching. But the black dunk low, for some reason, it just doesn't do it for me. Um, I much prefer the lighter color scheme of this. But yeah, the Ramalzi Dunk High, um, one of the only Nike Supreme products of the last, God, I can't, um, can't remember the last time I was really into a Nike Supreme uh, product. I didn't like the last batch of Dunk Lows with um, the alligator print or the alligator leather and the stars. I know that it was a callback to the Dunk Highs, but I think they did a pretty, bad job. I really didn't like the neon green that they picked. Um, the black was fine, the, the royal blue was fine, but it just didn't really evoke any sort of, wow, that was cool. It just felt like a very mid release. And I really didn't like the jewel dunk, like any of the stuff that they basically have done for the past few years. I really was not fucking with it. Oh, next one is uh, this, I just gotta give a shout out. This is um, a pair of hats made by Town Dust. I thought they did a really good job with the stitching and the embroidery. Really sick. I got this one for Caroline. I got this one for myself. I just think the fabric also looks really cool, almost like a Sashiko sort of fabric, repair fabric. Really, really sick. I personally really like it. The only thing is that I may want to swap out this plastic uh, buckle for like a leather strap, but really, really like it. Town Dust, I believe they still have a few things in stock. Next up is the Y3 uh, Gazelles. So I actually really like uh, the Y3 Gazelles that they just launched where it has that sort of suede upper with the loose stitching as well as a part of the sole kind of creeping up on top. I think it is a cool, fun take on the Gazelle that gives it sort of a sleek, futuristic, luxe sort of vibe. Um, I really like how they did the laces as well where it's kind of like tucked back in, gives it almost like a runner sort of vibe, but not really. Um, I know a lot of Y3 shoes you can find on sale, so next time when Essence hits sales, 
you can probably find it for maybe 50% off. I think that's like probably the prime just because retail on a lot of Y3 um, is super expensive. And I just think they knocked it out of park with the Gazelle model. I haven't had hot coffee in a while. I typically drink my coffee cold, so I may add some ice to it, but I am a degenerate for iced coffee. I will say that Y3 products lately just haven't really been giving me anything to work with. There are one or two handful of models that I really, really like. It just hasn't like been enough to have me go and grab it and stuff, but I think this is one of the ones there where I will probably grab it when it hits sale on Essence. Another one was the Itigo, which I covered a few months back. But that one, retail price is a lot higher. The style is a lot more like obscure. So that one, it would have to, I would have to put together like a fit and I would have to really be dedicated to like wearing that just because I feel like the gazelles are a lot more wearable versus the Itigo. Next up is Solomon collaborated with Notre in Chicago. Uh, they released an X-T4, which uh, is, for like wet grass, or at least that's the concept of it. Um, I thought the styling was A1. I thought the colorway picking was A1. Um, I actually personally prefer it more than the Hidden NY, uh, like Solomon. I know a lot of people are getting the Notre Solomons as a consolation for the, uh, the Hidden NY. I liked the Hiddens, um, but I think this one kind of gives it another cool factor um, that I thought was really, really unique. Um, I know that it sold out initially and then they had a few pairs in store and then they put stock back online. So I know you might be able to grab it online currently. So hopefully it's still in stock. I'll leave a link down below for it. Um, I think the X-T4, I personally like the X-T6 more than the X-T4, um, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, I think the X-T4 feels a little bit more bulky, which can be a pro for some people. Uh, for me, I always think Solomon's as something sleek, something minimal. Oh, Safe House Yankee Cap. So Safe House is um, a company that does uh, like vintage workwear, vintage clothing sourcing. Uh, they also have released a handful of their own products online. They have released multiple hats and multiple uh, screen printed shirts printed on vintage tees. Uh, I thought their NY uh, cap was really cool. Their Yankee Cap where it's sort of the NY uh, like Yankee script, but kind of hand-drawn in a different way. Uh, they sold out initially, restocked it, and then I just caught the restock. I don't know whether or not they're gonna release another batch, uh, possibly, but uh, I'm really excited to get it in. Um, it is a cool, simple black cap. And again, I may swap out the buckle in the back for just maybe like a leather buckle, I would say. Next one is a local uh, Bay Area, California Bay Area uh, brand called Dispatch. Dispatch is a, I guess an everyday carry brand slash bag brand in San Francisco. They are releasing an Ecopack collection. Yes, so this is part of the Ecopack line, which is 100% recycled polyester components. It's a three layer fabric with uh, like DWR coating. So it'll be like water resistant um, as long as the coating is maintained. And it also has a ripstop backing, a 700 ripstop backing. So uh, like Dispatch is a company where I found them when looking for alternatives for the acronym 3A bags, just because at the time they were one, really expensive, two, they haven't restocked in a while, and then three, they were just, um, the ones that were available were just way too big for my liking. So I wanted a simple 3A1 uh, or a 3A2-esque looking thing, but I actually found that Dispatch had a lot of cool designs as well as cool different sort of aspects to them. And I really do like the fact that they are taking considerable efforts towards uh, being sustainable, using recycled materials, etc. Um, without compromising the, the structural integrity and without compromising uh, the, the durability of the product. Because the most sustainable thing is to just reuse whatever you have. Um, so I really do appreciate that. That I've heard plenty of good things about Dispatch where they have all of their products made locally in the US. 
where they pay fair wages, etc. And also they support the local economy. So there's a lot of things that go into it. Obviously, it won't be that tech wear bag that you can flex on IG, but I do think that this is a great alternative. Another great alternative is uh, like Mission Workshop. It was actually one of my first um, forays into YouTube slash techware, sort of that environment. Um, and I still have it today. Um, it is my only and primary, I guess, sling bag that I have. So when I'm, when I know I'm gonna be in the city, I'm on the go, but I also need like a decent amount of carrying space. I always bring my Mission Workshop Monty VX. Um, another backpack that I would recommend is Backpack from the Brown Buffalo. That is my daily working bag. I, I just wear it all the time. It uses an expat fabric on the interior lining and then a ballistic nylon on the outside. I'll leave all the links down below. I just rambled on for backpacks. Man, dude, I have to get out of these expensive hobbies, I feel like. I just need to go outside. And talking about bags, I can't believe I put this next on the list. The acronym 3A MX. <laughs> I have, um, I've had one 3A before. I've had the 3A TS, which is the Texas, which doesn't have any of the add-ons. Um, and I personally, at the time, it just didn't fit what I wanted in a bag because a 3A one is not really an everyday carry bag. You can't really, I mean, it is if you don't use a laptop. If your primary mode of working is you get to work, you have a computer there, or you get to work with a tablet, um, that bag might suffice as a bag for you. But for me at the time, it didn't just because I was a student, I needed my laptop, I needed a few books, etc., and it just did not fit whatever I wanted it to be. Uh, so I ended up selling it, but now I'm in a position where I can feasibly use it as like almost an everyday bag just because laptops have gotten skinnier. Um, I don't need as much uh, to carry as well as I would like just an upgraded sling bag just because of the fact that my Monte VX is getting quite old. It is getting quite beat up. I'm probably gonna have to send it in for repair soon, but I just thought it'd be cool. But obvious downside is that the 3A is fucking expensive. It's like a grand and I do not have a grand to spend on a bag. So I will pass on it for now, but the 3A MX is probably my favorite of the ones that have come out. Um, I really like both the, uh, the green slash gray as well as the coyote color. Both of them look fantastic. Really, really like them. Um, I, that's probably next on the list of what I can buy, or if I can buy it secondhand for cheaper, um, I would try to if I could. Um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend uh, like maybe checking that out, see if that's within your budget, see if that's your style. Because from all the people that I know that have 3A1s, all of them really like it, so. Next one is Greg Ross Collection One. So Greg Ross, was a stylist with the Yeezy team during season, I think season three through six, maybe three through eight actually, three through eight, I think. He was working on and off as a stylist slash consultant with them. Um, this information might be slightly wrong just because there's like barely any public information on it and it's all like insider information. But Greg Ross has honed his teeth during those years, has constantly developed uh, their own design language and their own sort of style fabrics. You can instantly tell that it's something that he styled um, and his first collection finally dropped. Um, I really, really do want that cargo hoodie. I really want a lot of the pieces, although they are a bit expensive, I may sell a few things here and there to try and afford it just because I really do like the products that he has out. Um, please do check it out. Um, check the styling. Greg Ross has a long, I guess, catalog of clients that are celebrities, if you care about that. I know Drake and um, Drake was recently seen with it, which I don't even know if he really is someone that you want to take style advice from, especially from his like, fuck it. <laughs> Feelings hard, but dick harder or some shit like that, that hoodie. <laughs> For all the dogs, bro, for all the dogs. Cool collection, great collection, actually. Actually, let me look at a few of my favorite 
holy shit, actually a bunch of his shit just is sold out. Well, I guess I can't cop anything from him because a lot of his stuff is sold out, but I really did like his towel bomber jacket. <laughs> I guess I'm finding out live that a bunch of it sold out. Yeah, I really like the shoulder pad hoodie, the, um, the towel bomber jacket I really liked. I like the cargo pants, um, especially in that green. I think that green was like really, really killer. Um, but yeah, like, like all of his items weren't super, super expensive, but I really like the washes on all of them. But again, it sold out unfortunately, I guess. Okay, now we're on the section for rumors and upcoming releases. So there was a rumor that the Ueno Sakura Air Force One retros are gonna come out. That was disproven. Um, I believe that somebody posted a photo online of a sample prototype um, on Nike campus, but it's one of two apparently, and they were gonna release, or they made a sample like sometime this past year, and they, they decided not to go through with it. <sighs> Man, I don't even want to talk about it, bro. Like, I don't even, like, what do you, like, what, like, Nike, what more do you want from me? Although, I, like, early in the video, I did say that you are running out of cash and you want to make as much profit as you can while squeezing everything out of the community, but the Ueno Air Force Ones might be kind of nice. I will not get what I want. But I also don't deserve it. I am a piece of trash human being. Um, next one is the Terrell Winston. Reebok Club C Part 2. He accidentally leaked it, posted it on his Instagram. It is a very minimal white Club C, like you would imagine, with instead of a, let me just double check. Yes, so it looks like a thinner tongue. It has a blue terry cotton liner and a blue uh, bottom outsole. And it looks like a just tumbled leather all around. Fall winter 23, I'm assuming it's gonna happen in the upcoming three months, cause that's two months, cause that's all that's left. Um, I will say that I really like the first release. Um, I wasn't a big fan of that cow fur in the back. So this one looks like it's gonna have just all leather all around and I'm down for it. Um, he always releases very simple shoes, but the quality is where uh, he really stands out. I'm curious if they're planning on doing anything to the bottom sole because this past one it was this like light icy green with his signature on the bottom. I thought that was such a nice touch. Um, but let's see what happens with this upcoming release. This first release was very luxe. This upcoming release looks to be a lot almost simpler molded. Looks like the sole itself has some distressing on it but can't tell if that was done by him or if it was done like intentionally like in the manufacturing process we can only see the nike sakai magascape sp yes the nike sakai magascape sp um this definitely gives me footscape one vibes like especially the upper and that is you know hiroshi's favorite shoe and he loved that shoe if you look at a bunch of the old Nike magazines. He really loved the lacing system of this sort of model. Um, he thought it was very like innovative and that's back when Mark Parker was the head of Nike and I felt like a lot of that innovation was there. It was just like brewing and I love the HTM era. They just made so much cool shit um, and I really do like it. It gives off that old school um, ACG vibe. It has the double laces it has the cool retro colorways, and it just looks like a very simple low top shoe. Interesting laces. I think it's a bomb fucking shoe. Um, although you might say it looks like bricks. To be honest, they could be. You might, to be honest, maybe wait for sale. Wait until it hits sale, but that doesn't mean that this is not a sick shoe. Um, so I like it. I may still wait for sale. I don't want to pay full retail for anything nowadays. Uh, so yeah. The J Balvin Air Jordan 3. I don't really like this shoe. Um, the only reason that I'm mentioning it is because I know that this is one of Jordan Brand and Nike's biggest collaborative releases. I personally don't mess with the shoe, either the light color or the dark color. Um, I know for some people this is culturally very, very important and this is a landmark moment, 
but personally, just from a style aesthetic point of view, I don't really listen to any of his music, so I guess I'm sort of disconnected from it. Um, and maybe I'm not the target demographic. Still, I personally don't really vibe with the shoe. It just doesn't speak to me. Um, I'm curious to hear what you guys say, if you guys really fuck with it or not. I don't really see it. I think there are plenty of other more wearable shoes and especially the light and dark colorway, like the black leather colorway, I I really don't see it working. I can kind of understand the light tan colorway, but I don't really see either of them really working. Oh, this is one that I'm excited about, the Fear of God Adidas. It looks like everything's ramping up. It seems like all of the products are going to be released to the masses. Um, holiday 2023. Uh, I really do like the heritage models as well as the performance angled model, uh, the one that Push was wearing when he was performing, but I also can really appreciate uh, Jerry Lorenzo's uh, mindset to silhouette. I really do think that these ones will be knocked out of the park. Um, I hope that the retail isn't too expensive because uh, I know he wants to really uh, like elevate Adidas, but also at the same time, I can see him kind of having a compromise model. Like, you know how the Air Fear of God one, that one was kind of expensive, but they had the Air Raid and then the Air uh, Fear of God shoot away. And they had like a bunch of models that were almost, the parent models, the Air Fear of God one and everything else kind of delineates from that. Maybe the, the model that is kind of looks like a rivalry will be like that Lux version, maybe the low top will be cheaper. Um, same with the performance model. I can't imagine it being really like that performance. So maybe that'll be priced at an angle where most consumers can obtain it easily. Uh, but I can definitely see some of the apparel stuff being really expensive, especially that bag that they showed off. I can easily see that being like, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars Cause some of the fear of God bags are that expensive. This one I think is kind of interesting and that I really like that they do this is the Kobe for Pro Tro Black Mamba. I think the Pro Tro idea is probably my favorite idea from Nike Basketball just like ever when it comes to releasing older product. I feel like a lot of the time there is a reason to release products in their original form and their original shape, but I think if you want a shoe to be applicable for whatever it was previously created for, you have to create that pro tro model. I think a lot of the LeBrons just didn't hit just because they just weren't applicable to a pro tro type of mindset where they update the technology, they keep the look of it, but they update the technology and they keep it as is. Because a lot of the Kobe models, I know people that still use them to play ball just because they are that good. Um, and their Pro Tour model just brings modern technology, modern fitting, and slightly alters it, but keeps the aesthetic look of it. Um, I think they should do Pro Tours more often. Uh, they shouldn't just keep on releasing retros. I'm all for it. Yeah, and then here are a few archive, I guess, ideas. Um, is the Pusshead uh, Dunk Low, Dunk SB Low, one and two. Um, I was around the time when I first got into sneakers is around the SB era. Uh, I really liked both of them. I thought the packaging, the boxes were really cool, especially for the first one. Uh, the second one, I think they didn't do a special box, but they did do special paper, if I remember correctly, but I thought both of them were super sick. I know a lot of old pairs of Pusshead ones were kind of cracking some of the leather and it kind of looked weird, almost like the Sabotage Air Force ones where those, are not Air Force ones, the Sabotage SB Dunks, we're kind of cracking a little bit. I can see some pairs like that cracking as well. Um, it'd be cool if they did a Dunk Low Puss Head 3. I thought that'd be cool because it's a cool um, almost concept or maybe finishing off the trilogy would be really cool, paying homage. Um, the Nike considered BB Mid as well as the Moab 2s. I really like the Nike considered line, although I wasn't around for the time when they were in circulation and when they were uh, in stores, um, like looking back on it, they had a lot of cool ideas where a lot of it was maybe no stitch or no glue, sort of those ideas of sustainability um, were 
in the minds of some Nike designers back then, and you know, unfortunately Nike just cut the project um, and instead of letting it really flourish and leading the industry in that way, they sort of cut that lifespan short. And I know that some of the ideas still live on, you know, the basis of a lot of ACG product were rooted in there and a lot of the like HTM ideas came from there. A lot of the sort of the the seeds were planted essentially. But it'd be sick if they brought back the Nike considered line. Um, I would love to see a retro or pro tro, I guess, of the BB Mid or the Moab Two. Really, really cool shoes. Um, I love those sort of style of shoes. But I don't know whether or not that will align with Nike's uh, bottom line. Um, uh, another shoe uh, I have been looking at for quite a while is the Asics Jog 100S Sheer Sleet, I think? Sheer Rock. Um, that was a Korea slash Asia exclusive Asics. Lovely, lovely color. I think it's interesting having the Asics logo right on the toe box. I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, I'm hoping to free up some space in my rotation in order to pick them up but they are still super, super cool. Uh, if you guys have a chance, maybe grab them. Uh, they're relatively cheap on the secondary market, maybe around $100, so that's about retail. Um, it's a good Kiko Asics alternative, I would say, if you wanted to get those Kayanos that he released a while back during his first run as Asics, I think, chief creative director, if I remember, or design, I forgot what position he held. But during his first, after that announcement, he released two pairs. He released like a Piedmont gray and a purple and red color. This one is a good alternative to the Piedmont gray color, but yeah. Thank you guys again for watching. Comment down below if there's anything this past month that you thought was interesting and let's get a dialogue going. I will be back with more videos soon. Um, I have a few things coming in. I'm gonna do um, sort of like a wardrobe video, a pickups video, and maybe fits for the winner sort of video so yeah thank you guys i will talk to you guys later peace